Hi, I'm Ayush Kashyap. I'm a senior from Stevenson. My name is Colin, and I'm also a senior. My name is Jack. I'm also a senior. My name is Nathan. I'm also a senior. My name is Ade. I'm also a senior. OK, great. Uh, whenever you're ready, you can begin. Hello judges, we are team number 16407 from Adlai East Stevenson High School, and this is our presentation, Ride Like the Wind, The Growth of E-Bikes. So in our part one, we started by finding the growth for e-bike sales, finding that in 2025, there'll be 2.7 million sales, and 2028, we'll have 5.4 million. In part two, we found the relative importance of different factors contributing to e-bike sales, finding that the coolness factor, or the number of people around an individual that purchase e-bikes, is the most important. And finally, in part three, we found the impact of e-bikes on the environment and health, finding that in 2028, by 2028, there'll be 2.5 million tons of CO2 saved with an average of 81.5 calories burned. So we'll start with part one, the road ahead. Our first assumption was that the number of e-bike sales after the COVID pandemic must be accounted for separately from pre-COVID numbers. And this is because the pandemic changed the perception of e-bikes from a niche transportation option to a viable form of micro-mobility, as was touched upon by Carl Sundstrom in his presentation. And this means that they're usable in day-to-day -day life. Our next assumption was that e-bike sales will follow the same general pattern of sales as regular bikes. And this is because e-bikes are just a motorized version of the standard bike, so their markets should be closely uh, very similar. And our, our final assumption is that the number of e-bikes in use in a given year is the number of e-bikes that were sold in the previous 10 years, as e-bikes have a, a lifespan of 10 years, and we can assume that owners will use their e-bikes for the entire lifespan. So our first variable is T0, and this represents the base year for the logistic regression, or 2020. Our second variable is Z of T, which represents the number of e-bikes that will be sold in year T, while Y of T is the number of e-bikes in use in year T. So as part of our methodology, we began by creating a logistic regression for Z of T from 2013 to 2022. And we were inspired by computer vision data augmentation techniques to expand our data set. We then integrated Z of T to find predictions for Y of T, specifically in the years 2025 and 2028. So since Z of T is a logistic regression, it takes the following form, where L rate is the maximum number of e-bikes that can be sold in one year while K rate is the relative growth rate coefficient for Z of T. So to drive L rate, we use the economic principle of elasticity of demand. And this, we we're able to use this principle as the market for e-bikes is similar to perfect competition. So in this equation, we see that 200 is the average price of a regular bike, while 3,000 is the average price of an e-bike. And similar, 17.4 represents the maximum number of regular bikes that we sold in a given year. So we find that L rate is about 1.16 million. So for driving the sales per year, we developed a Python program that iterated through different values of K, finding that 0 0.665 is the error minimizing value. Thus, our expression for Z of T takes the following form. For driving cumulative sales Y of T, we used a very similar process and found the following equation. So these are our results. In 2025 and 2028, we found that there will be 2.7 million and 5.4 million e-bikes sold, respectively. So one key strength of our model was that using a logistic function incorporated a maximum rate of e-bike sales, which other models don't necessarily do. And our second strength was that we used the existing market for bikes to make logical predictions for e-bikes, as e-bikes are a very new product. One area for improvement, however, is that we had limited data, so the derivations for Z of T could limit the accuracy of the model. Thank you, Ayush. Uh, in part two of our model, we're going to find a probability function that determines the relative importance of the factors that lead an individual to purchase an e-bike. So our two key assumptions in this section are we're only going to consider the purchases of e-bikes in urban areas. Because of the long distances that people need to travel in suburban or rural areas, we, the, the market for e-bikes in these sectors is very niche, and we basically took them out of our equation for simplicity. Uh, the second uh, key assumption is that the four uh, factors that we considered in our model, which are commute time, income, health, and environmental awareness, are independent of one another, and we needed to make this assumption so we could compare them relative to one another. We also realized that the impact of each of these factors on one another is quite weak, such as the dependence of income on uh, health awareness. So the, the methodology outlined for this section is we're going to generate a probability function for the uh, adoption of an e-bike in time, in a given time. 
Uh, and this probability function is defined in terms of uh, proportionality constant beta, which we'll talk about later in part three. Uh, X, which is the proportion of people that currently own an e-bike, we range this from zero to one. And F, which is a function of the four factors I mentioned earlier. And when we find this probability function, we're basically gonna, we're gonna take the partial derivative of P with respect to each variable, which will find the change in probability due to each change in each variable. And by using these partial derivatives, we'll rank them to find the relative importance of each factor. So we'll start with the coolness factor, which is X, which we define as a number of people around an individual that currently have an e-bike. So the more people around you that have an e-bike, the more cool it will seem to you. In, the in part one of our model, we used a logistic model of growth for the e-bike market, which is defined as dx dt is proportional to x times one minus x. Now in part two, we're considering the probability p, which is the definition of a person adopting e-bike in time tau, as you can see in that equation. If we define p as this, then in time dt, the number of people that will switch to an e-bike is the probability, which is p times dt over tau, multiplied by the number of people that have yet to purchase an e-bike, which is one minus x. And if we compare these two equations together, we find that P is linearly dependent on X, which makes sense because the more people around you that have an e-bike, the more popular it will seem to you and the like, more likely you are to purchase the e-bike. So as you can see, we have P is proportional to X here and we also have beta and the function F, which we'll talk about uh, in the next slide. So the first uh, contributor to that function F is commute time, as you can define as C. Um, and we're gonna multiply C to the probability um, that we found earlier. So what's gonna happen is we defined, uh, we used a human attention span to find the dependence of uh, commute time on probability of purchasing e-bike. So human attention span is currently, uh, we found that it was normally distributed with a standard deviation of 10 minutes. And we defined as if someone were to not change in the commute time, uh, commute time would not influence the probability of purchasing an e-bike. So essentially if delta TC, which is a change in the commute time by switching to an e-bike, if that's zero, then the probability uh, the, the factor C is gonna equal to one, so that's not gonna change the probability. But as commute time increases, uh, people's tolerance for that increase in commute time will decrease due to their attention span, and we can see we follow that normal distribution downwards. And if delta TC is less than zero, so this uh, commute time will not inhibit uh, the probability of purchasing an e-bike, so we define C as equal to one for all those values. Thank you, Colin. Next, we will move on to financial affordability. An average American spends around 8.5% of their yearly income on non-essential goods. So dividing the average price of an e-bike by 0.085 give us a floor of the family income for them in order to afford an e-bike, which is around $35,300. On the other hand, we assume that $100,000 a year was the threshold for income stability. So the family earns more than that, then uh, fin F will not inhibit uh, their adoption of an e-bike. And from 35,000 to 100,000, the more income a family earns, the more money they can allocate to non-essential goods. So we're saying the more money you earn, the higher your F goes, which means the higher probability you have of adopting an e-bike. Then we move on to health environmental awareness. This is different from previous factors because personal opinions don't necessarily make or break your model. This means that if I care a lot about my health, but not so much about the environment, there's still a chance that I can adopt an e-bike. So we then took data from surveys that outlined how much an individual cares about their health, how much an individual cares about their environment. And then we took a weighted average of that to calculate the coefficients in front of health and environmental awareness, which is 0.607 and 0.393 respectively. Combining all those factors, we derived the comprehensive equation to calculate probability in time tau. And taking the partial derivative of, of that, we essentially provide a sensitivity analysis that analyzes how the probability function will change when each of the factors change. So at our results, we can see that the coolness factor is the most important with a value of 0.051, followed by commute time, financial affordability, health, and finally, environmental awareness. One interesting thing to note is that the value of coolness factor is actually one magnitude above the rest. This is because the e-bike right now is a relatively niche market. So whether or not someone adopts an e-bike depends very heavily on if someone else around them adopts an e-bike as well. And now for strengths and areas of improvement, we utilize factors more uh, beyond the professional realm, such as health and environmental awareness to provide a more well-rounded model. Secondly, our probability function is consistent with our logistic regression from part one. 
and for our areas of weakness, we did not predict the evolution of battery life in the future, which might potentially underestimate the adoption of e-bikes as they gain more range with longer battery lives. Thank you, Jack. Now, moving on to the third part. In this part, we used a Monte Carlo simulation to project the overall impact e-bike growth would have on the environment and on our own personal health. So this slide here, it outlines our general approach for this section. And we started by first deriving a numerical value for the prefactor beta, which Colin mentions in part two. So while it is fine for beta to remain as a constant in part two, it now becomes necessary to derive its numerical value in order to match the expression for p in part two with our logistic in part one. And now once we've derived this prefactor beta, we have a working probability adoption function, which we can use to simulate the adoption of e-bikes for a sample population. And then finally, the results of this simulation will allow us to find the overall impact e-bike growth will have on gas use or gallons saved and calories burned. <laughs> 